This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas with another RIBOR lesson. Up till now, on all the lessons I've done, the RIBOR lessons and the beginner lessons both, I have never gotten out a punch card or used an electronic pattern until this lesson. What I'm going to do today is a tuck stitch. You can do beautiful tuck stitch ribbing on the Brother machines. People think they need a passive machine to do beautiful tuck stitch, but there are a lot of things you can do on the Japanese machines with ribbers. So I'm going to show you how to choose a pattern. For tuck stitch, what you're going to do is get out your punch cards or get out your pattern book and look for the pages that are black or look for the punch cards where almost all the holes are punched. So as I flip through this book, you can see I'm getting into the pages that are black where most of the pattern is punched. And I have one in mind. I think I will do this one. I think I'm in the mood for these squares. Let me zoom in on it. With tuck stitch and this pattern book, the squares that are white are the squares that are going to be the tuck stitches. And I want no more than about three in a stack vertically, especially as I get started with tuck stitch. And this pattern qualifies. It's mostly black, and it has just a couple of stitches in a stack. And this is going to show up just great in full needle rib. Following the instructions that came with this electronic bulky, I put pattern 117 in the computer of the machine. And that would be the same thing as putting your punch card in. After I've got that done, I'm still not selecting needles. If I were to go across, the carriage would not select needles. To get the carriage to select needles, I turn this dial right here to KC. There are different, uh, different ways of doing it on different machines. The other thing that I must do if I want to select needles is bring the carriage all the way out to the turn mark before the first row. For the first row, it's not set to tuck. It's just set to select needles. So I knit across, and the machine selects needles. In this pattern, it has selected almost all the needles. The ones that it hasn't selected, these needles, where you can see the needle butt is back, those are the ones that are going to be tuck stitch. I push my two tuck buttons, and now I'm just going to knit back and forth for quite a while and make a sample for you to see. That's really all there is to it. I made a big long sample with several stitch patterns. Here's that pattern 117 on my Brother 270. And look how that looks. These are great for blankets or whatever. They're virtually finished when they come off the machine because being ribbing, it doesn't roll at all. It doesn't roll in any direction. Let me show you the next pattern. Here's the next pattern. It was just another picture in the book. I programmed it in the machine and I went. It was kind of a plaid, window pane looking pattern. And I liked it because it had this vertical detail that I knew would be a wiggly line. Here's another pattern that I tried that was triangles. In the book it was all black, but it had these little stacked up triangles that were two white stitches here and two white, two white, two white, and then in between two white. So there's the triangles, which is one of my favorites. And here's a zigzag border that I tried out. This was actually a fair isle stitch, and I did a reverse so the background would be black, and the selected needles would be white, and then tried it in tuck, and it worked fine. So there are lots and lots of things you can do with this, and I think you should give it a try.